Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Homestead Economy. But before that, this video is brought to you by Jimmy Anderson and Scooter's Workbench. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Homestead Economy map can be found at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to the Homestead Economy map. This is a small Hungarian map designed for small and medium sized machinery. It is based on a fantasy, but its inspiration is from my hometown. What you should know about this map is since I used my hometown as a basis for its creation, I have hidden several crops from the crop menu. Basically what he's saying here is he's removed olives, sugarcane, cotton, and poplar from the map so you're not gonna be able to plant any of those. In addition, he has also removed some from the hired work. And I believe what this means is he's basically configured it so certain crops cannot be planted by hired helpers or basically by the AI farmers, that's what I mean. Now these have not been removed from the map, so if you do wish to plant those and work the fields yourself, that is fine. Additionally, the edge of the map has not been enclosed, so those who wish to expand, can do so. Now that's a very interesting aspect because you're gonna be able to extend beyond the pre-prepared maps and fields. This map includes 54 fields, four meadows, one farm, a gas station. Well, I, I have to counter that. There's, in my opinion, two farms and then maybe one questionable farm. So potentially there's three farms on this map but uh, the description just calls out one, a gas station, filling station for seeds only, water area, animal pens, chickens, sheep, cows, and pigs, six selling points, a BGA, bunker silos, cheese, butter, and plank production. We also have carrots and alfalfa as added crops. Now, of course, if you have the premium expansion, well, you already have carrots, red beets, and parsnips. But if you don't have the premium expansion, this map introduces the ability to harvest carrots. And with that information, let's go ahead and load on in. Now, while there are no required mods on this map, we are gonna be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food, overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you happen to load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that the farm is built out exactly how you see it here in new farm mode. You do not have any starting vehicles in those alternate game modes, nor do you own any land. Now, with respect to low end systems, you should have no issues whatsoever in maintaining a nice solid 60 FPS on this map, regardless of where you are. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And one of the first things you're gonna notice is that this is a very small map. If we scroll all the way out, the empty square area is the size of a standard map. And therefore you can see that this area here is very, very small. But as the map author mentioned, there shouldn't be any map collisions on the exterior of this tree line. So in essence, you have the ability to have the entirety of this green area as your own map if you want to expand beyond the pre-prepared fields and cell points here in order to get into a bit of the wilderness. Now, as I mentioned on the intro, this map is excluding the ability to do olives, sugarcane, cotton, and poplar. And if you don't have the premium expansion, well, you'll have the ability to have carrots as well as alfalfa. If you do have the premium expansion, well then of course you have your red beets and parsnips as well. If we take a look at our farmland screen, you'll see we start up owning farmland ID 55. That is the main starting farm, which is gonna include chicken and sheep. There is a production point at farmland ID 65. That is gonna be a homestead dairy. We have a sawmill at farmland ID 62, and we have a BGA at farmland ID 69. Those are the three productions that are available on this map. There is a pig area, farmland ID 58. That can be bought for $19,000. And then there is another farm, in my opinion, another farm over here at farmland ID 61. And that is gonna be for cows and pigs. 
and that is going to be viable for $66,000. Let's go and take a look at our farmland lease screen. Our farmland lease screen shows us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included, then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? And here you can see farmland ID 127, 386 hectares, $2.7 million. That should be for the exterior here of the map. Yep, and that will buy all of this outer area if you want to go that route. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the sizes of the prepared fields on this map. And as you can see, all of these fields are fairly small and most of them being less than one hectare in size. Let's go ahead and take a look at our precision farming soil map. This map is making use of the generic soil map. So I really don't expect a whole lot of soil type differences given the small size of these fields and this map itself. You see to the north of the starting farm, we've got a fair bit of fields that are silty clay. Right in the middle of the map, we've got a fair number of fields that are loam. And then to the south and east and west, we've got a mix of loamy sand and sandy loam. With respect to our crop counter, we do have a custom crop counter available to us on this particular map. And here you can see our growth calendar for our alfalfa and carrots. With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the crops that are available to us on this map. In addition, we do have the ability to sell our eggs, well, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we continue down through all of the base game production items, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items as well. With respect to the ability to buy bulk lime, we do not have the ability to buy bulk lime, nor do we have the ability to sell stones. So if you are playing with stones enabled, you will need to put down your own stone sell point. With respect to alfalfa, we have the ability to do alfalfa or alfalfa hay. And then of course we have our carrots here. If we don't have premium expansion, you will have access to carrots. If you have premium expansion, well then carrots are pretty standard. With respect to our farm production pack, we do not have the ability to sell our washed root crops. And we also do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items. Now, with respect to our premium expansion, we do have the ability to sell premium expansion crops and products. We do not have the ability to sell our separated manure. So those playing with straw harvest, you'll need to find some other way of getting rid of that product if you are producing it. Those running with our straw harvest, you do have the ability to get rid of your hay and straw pellets as well. We start out with a very small starting fleet. All of it is owned, none of it is leased. We do have, now I've gone ahead and bought the other farms for the purpose of the farm tours later on in the video. But at the start, you have sheep and chickens alone. We do have contracts available to us on this map. And we do own the dairy at the start. I have also, for the purpose of doing the fly around, purchased the BGA and the sawmill. But at the start, you only own the dairy. And you have to buy the BGA and the sawmill by buying the corresponding farm land. This map does have the 20 Hulk Betharoon game cartridge collectibles as well. With respect to our starting fleet, we start with the Fent Favret 511C small tractor. We have the Nova 330 harvester, and we have the PowerStream 500 grain hitter for that harvester. We have the Welgar DK 115 trailer, the Rabe EG39 cultivator, and the Nordstein HK25 NS3030 cedar and power harrow combination. Then we wrap it all up with a 600 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, well, we do have some custom equipment for those carrots. Remember, you don't have to have the premium expansion in order to be able to do carrots on this map. We have a modified EVO 290 harvester. We have also have a modified 6300 platinum self-propelled sugar beet and carrot harvester. Good luck getting this around many of the fields. We also have a modified belt, again, for carrots. 
the Ventor 4150 for potatoes and carrots. And then we have a crate of carrots as well. Now here at our starting farm, we have a sleep trigger. In fact, this is exactly where you start. Around the side, we have a water fill trigger. And we have our chicken coop. So we have our food drop off. We can have a total of 12 chickens in this little coop. And then we have our egg spawn point right there. As we make our way down this shed here, we do have a dealer trigger actually. And while we don't have any trigger markers, I will tell you that the trigger is located right here. We have our sheep area. We're gonna be able to buy 15 sheep in total. And we have our wool spawn point. We have our food trough. And then we have our water trough inside. And that's our gate. And here we have two storage silos. Very interesting. We have a dump point and a fill trigger. These are simply coming up as storage silos. I'm going to jump in this tractor and just back up here and see what I can fill out of these. So from our right silo, we're going to be able to store wheat, barley, oat, canola, sorghum, sunflower, soybeans, corn, and then back to wheat. And then the same is going to be said for our left silo. Again, wheat, barley, oat, canola, sorghum, sunflowers, soybeans, corn. We're all going to be stored in both of those locations. Now behind the sheep area, we have then our home style dairy. We have our dump point for our input products. We have our interactive icon right here. And while it's not marked, our pallets are gonna spawn right here. Our harvester is already staged over here at one of our starting fields. And that is basically this particular farm. Now, right across the road, basically, we have a pig area. So we're gonna be able to store or keep 30 pigs in this pen. We have our water, we have our food. We're gonna be able to straw, blow our straw inside of there as well. Then we have a little shed here for storage. Now with, resp with respect to farms being customizable, we can sell everything on all the farms, including this area. Across the street from that, we do have a silage bunker located right here and this silage bunker it can also be sold now while we're over here and just given the size of this map we're going to go ahead and hit up this area there really isn't much need to fly around on this map at all here we have our dealer trigger and again while it is not marked the actual dealer trigger is right here in front of the wrench we have our animal dealer and here we have two cell points. And these are rather interestingly named. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. We have Uncle Giza and Uncle Jani. Those are two cell points. And then inside the shed, we have store one and store two. So these are gonna be grain cell points. And then store one and store two are going to typically be cell points for our products. We have our fuel point, and then we have our shop.
And we have a fairly small area for our vehicles and implements to spawn in at here. But again, if you stick within the bounds of this map play area, we've got fairly small fields anyway. But as the description mentioned, we should be able to bust out of this area and get into a wide open wilderness. You can see we're now into the wide open wilderness and we have all of this area once we buy it to literally do whatever we want with. And then you can see how large the pre-made part of the map is right there. We're back within the predefined map area. Up on this hill, we have our biogas plant. This biogas plant can be sold. We have our interactive icon. We have our digester. We have our dump point and our fill point here for digestate and our dump point for slurry and manure. So again, this can be sold. And then we have a silage bunker located right here. And again, I mentioned you do need to buy the land for these productions to be available. We have our starting farm. We're making our way over here to the western, or sorry, the eastern side of the playable area. Here we have our sawmill. So this is where our wood chips are going to spawn. This is going to be a wood cell point independent of the sawmill. We have our sawmill interactive point, and then we have our dump point here. And then with respect to our planks, well, they're going to spawn right there. Now, if we go across the street, we have a bale cell point. And then here we have the pig and cow farm. So we have our milk point for our cows. We have our food trough for our cows. We have our cow buy point, 12 cows in total. We have then our slurry point for these cows. And then we have a manure heap. Our slurry point for our pigs. We're going to have a total of 30 pigs in here. And again, we have our food there. We're going to be able to blow straw inside of here. And folks, that is pretty much the basis of this map. Here's where we're going to be able to draw water out. This map does have collisions on utility poles as you saw there but i think the big caveat the big the big thing that makes this map interesting is we're not limited to this area here if we wanted to go and expand out into this wild blank wilderness we have that capability because there are no boundary collisions outside of this circular tree line we're going to be able to go all the way out here to the boundary of what would be the standard size map for anything else that we want to get into. So with respect to our scoring system on this map, we're going to be giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such because we have the BGA, a dairy, and a sawmill. We're also going to be giving the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell all of our base game crops, animal outputs, and productions. While we are missing the ability to do olives, sugarcane, cotton, and poplar, they have been physically, physically removed from the map, so the fact that we can't sell some of those is not that big of a deal. Now, we do have the inability to sell stones. We also don't have the ability to buy bulk lime, but we do not really take points off for that. But it is the ability to have alfalfa, alfalfa hay, and carrots. Again, if you do not own the premium expansion, so that is nice as well. With respect to farm customization, we can sell everything at all of these farms, all of these buildings, all of the animal pens, 
so the farms are completely and totally customizable. Buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Now this one, I could go either way on, honestly, because, well, some of these buildings are using more of a flat texture where we actually do have buildings or other items. So I think what we should probably do is go with three quarters of a point just for overall consistency sake. And then lastly, trigger in interactive areas being clearly marked. We're gonna go again with three quarters of a point, but because we do have a few trigger areas like the maintenance trigger at the main farm, the maintenance trigger at the dealership that are not clearly indicated, I would like to see that happen. So again, three quarters of a point there. That's going to wrap this map up with a total score of four and a half out of five. And I think this is a really neat idea. I like these small maps. I like these small fields. It's really ideal for players that really don't have a whole lot of time to put into farming simulator and still feel that they can actually accomplish something. Or maybe folks that are looking to play with stuff that is lower in horsepower and overall working width. But if you want to, we have, well, 300 plus hectares of wilderness land out here. Now, while there aren't any trees to clear off, it would have been nice maybe to have planted trees out here, maybe in a lightly planted area or various spotted forests. We do have the entirety of the rest of the map to literally do whatever we want with. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this particular map and this particular design scheme. Until next time, happy farming.